Hi guys, so you'll have to forgive me because my kitchen is a mess and I was really debating whether or not to make this video because my kitchen is always a mess. So it's a little bit embarrassing, but this isn't the real me. You know, I have kids and I am pregnant, so, and I cook, so it's not always going to be Martha Stewart clean. But I thought today that I would share with you a cooking video because everybody has been really asking me for one. And I, you know, usually, I don't know. I don't feel like I'm a cook, so it's just like to get, you know, I don't know. So what I thought I'd do is I'd share a really simple recipe for you. I know it's the end of summer. This is going to sound so stupid because it's a soup, but I have been craving this soup for like weeks now, and it's something that I make all throughout the fall and all throughout the winter all the time. It's really, really cheap. It's really, really simple. It's really, really good, and it, it feeds a lot of people. So. That is what I'm going to be doing. So the meal that I'm going to share with you is called taco soup. It's something that my mom shared with me when I first moved out on my own as a quick and easy um, kind of, I mean, I guess it's pretty healthy. It's got a lot of protein in it um, recipe to make. And me being pregnant right now, I thought it'd be perfect to share with you because when this baby will be born, it will be cooler out, it will be fall and then winter. And so this will be a really good recipe for me to make. So as you can see, it's about three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, it's gonna be done in the crock pot, which my crock pot is my best friend. So this is gonna be a crock pot um, recipe, but you can also do this over stovetop if you're in a hurry. But like I said, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. My husband just called and said he'd be home in two hours and my son is napping. So it's the perfect time to put this together. And like I said, I'll show you, you'll see why it's so great um, to do it in the crock pot. So I'm going to go get ready because obviously I need to wash my hands, I need to get my hair out of my face so it's not falling in the food and put an apron on. So I will be right back. Okay, so my hands are clean, my apron is on, and my hair is out of my face, and more importantly, it will not fall into whatever food that we are making. So what you're going to want to start off with, these are the ingredients, and I will say that I am not picky. I do love my organic foods, I love my organic produce, but when it comes to saving money and this being a more relevant recipe for college students, single people, um, families that are larger, you know, and are on a budget, I thought that I would just do what the cheapest things that I found at the grocery store would be. So. Um, you're going to need a pound of ground chuck, um, one onion. I like to do, this is a red sweet onion, sometimes I like to do Vidalia's, it doesn't matter. Um, but again, this is a red sweet onion. Um, you're going to need beans then. These are all canned. That's another nice thing about this recipe is that you can buy stuff ahead of time and then like have all this stuff in your pantry and then all you need to do is get some ground beef and an onion, you know, when you're in a bind not knowing what to make. So that's why I like it as well. So. You can do a different combination of beans, it really doesn't matter. The more beans you add in, obviously, the more soup you're going to have. So yeah, these are just the ones that I usually like to get. So I have a can of red beans, I have a can of black beans, I have a can of kidney beans, I have a can of pinto beans, and then you're also going to need a can of uh, Mexican chopped tomatoes or Mexican stewed tomatoes. I prefer the chopped tomatoes just because, well, I don't, stew, the Mexican stewed tomatoes are really good, but I feel like you have to break apart tomatoes because they're like quartered, and this way they're already chopped up nicely so you don't have to worry about it. And then a can of whole kernel, kernel corn. Do not get the sweet cream corn or the creamed corn. Don't do that. Get the kernel corn. So you'll need that. Then you're also going to need a picante, uh, one jar of picante sauce. I like medium, it's a good uh, balance for us and our family because my husband really likes hot, but I'm more of a medium girl and my daughter has a sensitive mouth as well so we compromise on medium again if you really like spicy soup then you can do hot picante and that tastes really good too according to my husband so these are all the ingredients that you're going to need all of this stuff is like under twenty dollars um and i will share the other top toppings that you can add on later but so this is what you're going to need for the main basis of the soup so let's get started so for this recipe, it's seriously, this is like one of the simplest things I can even show you guys. Um, you're going to open up your crock pot and I like to put all of my canned ingredients in first before I start browning my meat and sauteing my onions just because it keep, gets this stuff warming up sooner. You're going to want to open up all of your cans so, you know, yeah, this is kind of tedious. Okay. 
Okay, so as you can see, I have all of my cans open. Now what you're gonna do is you're literally gonna pour every single can into your crock pot. Don't drain anything, just pour it all in. And then you're gonna put in, oh, your picante sauce, which again, if you don't wanna put in the whole can, you don't have to, but I just do. And now you're gonna plug it in. And now since my husband is not gonna be home for another hour and a half, I'm gonna put it on the low setting. But obviously, if you're, you know, need it sooner than that, again, you can do this all on stovetop. It's a lot faster. Or you can set it on higher medium and just stir it every once in a while. So I'm going to turn it on if I can see. So again, just check it, you know, every once in a while throughout the day or throughout your time. And then, yeah. So while this, all this stuff is heating, we're going to go over and we're going to brown the meat and the onion, which first we should probably cut the onion, eh? So like I said, you can use um, red onion, you can use Vidalia onion, you can use sweet, you can use hot. It's all up to you and your preference um, of just kind of how hot and spicy you want, oh jeez, your sauce to be or your soup to be. So either my makeup is running down my face or I don't even know. <laughs> I am definitely, definitely, definitely crying though. So now that I have my onion cut, which actually you can go ahead and put the ground beef on the stove on medium high while you're cutting up the onion, obviously. Um, but you know, I'm trying to record this <laughs> as well as do this at the same time. So I thought this would be easier. So we're just going to go ahead and brown the meat now, which is should only take a few minutes. So I thought that while I was browning this meat, I would talk to you about a <laughs> the beta topic for this week, which if my makeup is everywhere, oh, it's the onion. So I am an INFJ. I N I N F J. Yes, I'm an I N F J. The topic was um, take a Myers Briggs personality test. Tell us what you are tell us if it helps with um, or if you believe in personality tests and all that junk. So I wasn't going to do this topic but I had a few beta -ers email me after they saw my pregnancy update when I said that I would not be doing this topic so I thought well I'll just mix it in with um, cooking because they wanted to know what my personality would be. So I am an INFJ and after taking that confusing test because it's like I sat there and there are questions that I wanted to like answer a certain way, but I wanted to answer just a smidge the other way. So I'm like slightly, not like all the way, I'm slightly. So anyways, I'm an INFJ and after reading the description for an INFJ, I'm definitely an INFJ. I guess like Billy Crystal's an INFJ, uh, Mother Teresa's an INFJ, which I am not trying to compare myself to Mother Teresa, trust me. Uh, it's just, yeah. So I'm actually slightly introverted, which I knew that already. I am very introverted. Um, and yeah, so if you are interested in knowing what INFJ characteristics are, you can go ahead and Google that because I'm not going to spend 20 minutes talking about it. Um, but in terms of it helping me, no, it has not helped me because I already knew those things about myself. And yes, now it makes a little bit more sense of why I am the way that I am. It's like, okay. The job descriptions of what they say that I should be, like, are things that I don't want to be. I don't want to be a teacher. I don't want to be a nurse. Those are all things that my aptitude tests I sh said that I should be, but I don't want to be those things. So now I'm just kind of more confused and frustrated because now it's like, well, now what do I do? So yes, I'm an INFJ, whatever that means to you. <laughs> Now, do I believe in personality tests? Yes, I really do. I think, I don't fully like think that 100% that means who you are, but I do think that they are helpful and I do think that um, depending on what kind of test you're taking or how well it's been made, I do believe that yes, they can be helpful in like finding a employee or a friend or a partner, stuff like that. So I think I might make my husband take the test just to see what he is, but yeah, I'm definitely, an introvert, which I already knew, but nobody ever believed me. So as you can see, it's getting pretty brown, but we still want to make sure. 
I don't like big chunks of meat in my soup or in general unless it's a big fat steak. So I'm going to make sure to chop up this ground beef as much as I can into tiny little thingies. If you're wondering about this spoon or what, I don't know what you call this. It's not like a spoon, it's not a spatula, it's made out of wood. I don't know, I really like it. It's Pampered Chef that I got for my wedding a few years ago. And I probably should get a new uh, skillet, so before any of you are like, oh my god, you're using a skillet that scratches all over it and blah blah blah. Men do not listen when you say no metal on non-stick things. <laughs> but whatever, so there's scratches in it, but I love this skillet. It's my favorite and I just can't bring myself to getting rid of it quite yet, so don't judge. So as you can see, there's a lot of grease. Um, that is the more content you have a fat than you do lean in terms of the chuck ground chuck that you pick out the more grease that you will end up having when you cook it off so now it's all brown so I am going to now drain the grease because I hate grease and it does not look or taste good in your soup of course you do not ever want to put grease in plastic because it's hot and melt so I always save an old uh, pasta sauce container and a glass one and then I put my grease in there so as you can see, I have all of my meat browned, it is drained, and so now I am going to take the onion that I had cut up earlier, and I honestly am not going to use all of the onion because my husband doesn't is not a huge fan of onion, so I'm going to put probably about a little over a half of the onion in here, and the rest I'll save for. Now I like to cook my onion and my ground beef together just because... Well, it locks in the flavor of the onion to the beef and the beef to the onion, and I don't have to dirty up a second dish. I also do this when I make spaghetti too. I just, I mean, why dirty up more dishes than you have to? So as you can see, my onion is cooked and it is nicely, not completely see-through because it will be in the crock pot for a little bit, but it is definitely um, more of a gray color. And now we are going to add this to the crock pot. We're going to take our ground beef and our onion, all of it, and pour that on top of our already cooking mixtures of beans and corn and salsa. And what's nice about this is there's no guessing. Like you don't, I mean, you really can't mess this recipe up. Um, you don't have to add any like herbs or any seasoning, which I know some people get scared scared about because they're just like oh you know oh, I don't want to put too much flavor in it really all you do is add these basic key things and it just tastes really really good so then you're gonna stir that up mix it in and so because you've already browned the ground beef and done the onions all you have to do is heat this through so that the beans and the corn and the salsa are all heated through so that is where the crock pot comes in Ooh, that is hot so that is where the crock pot comes in if you are in a hurry, like I said, do the stovetop. For me, I'm, again, it's now, it is now 3.30, which is pretty impressive considering I've been moving you guys around the whole kitchen with me. Uh, and I started crying with the onions. But um, it doesn't take long to prepare. And then while this is cooking, your kids are napping. You can clean up your kitchen and get the table set and do whatever else you need to do and just forget about it right here. So if you need to do about like two to three hours, I would do a lower setting. If it's only gonna be for an hour, I would do like a medium setting to a high setting. But again, just check it every once again. You just pull off the lid, check to see the temperature and really you're good to go. So I will show you what this looks like when my husband comes home. All right guys, so sorry if this vegetable thing is in the way but it is about 5 30 almost I started this whole process at I believe um, three o'clock maybe so it took me about 20 minutes to prepare everything and then it's been heating which is actually really really hot right now so I turned it down to the warming setting on my crock pot but it's been heating for about two hours and my husband is now home from work, so we are gonna get prepared or get ready to eat. My parents are on the way over as well. And this thing is like, if you can see, it's filled up to the top. So there is tons of soup. Like there is plenty of soup. And to top it all off, what we usually do, which again, you're more than welcome to just eat it however you want. It tastes great by itself, but our tradition, or not tradition, but the way we eat it is we um use the Tostitos or what do you call those things? Yeah, Tostitos scoops and sa Daisy sour cream. I don't know why I love the taste of sour cream so much. Not the non-fat, but I love regular Daisy sour cream. 
do a dollop of that. Which again, if it's too spicy for some people in your family, the more sour cream you add, the more it miles it out. But I like to put a little dollop of sour cream, some Mexican cheese, which we always have Mexican cheese in our kitchen because, or in our refrigerator, because my husband and I love quesadillas. And then some scoops, which we like the scoops because you can scoop it in, you can either crumble them in into the soup and eat it, or you can scoop it out and eat it that way, which we really like that too. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is my first cooking video and I feel really stupid making it. But yeah, happy beta day seven. I survived a week and you guys have followed me for weeks. So thank you. Yay. Um, again, if you have any suggestions for more videos that you'd like to see, let me know. Um, I'm really actually a better baker than I am a cooker. I love cooking, I do, uh, but I'm actually better at baking, so I thought I would show you a bunch of that kind of stuff too, because I, for some reason, have a sweet tooth right now. I wonder why. But uh, yeah, so I will talk to you guys all tomorrow, and thanks for watching. Bye. I also forgot to mention that a good reason for making taco soup is it makes amazing leftovers. You just put it in the refrigerator, heat up a bowl whenever you're hungry, and it's just like amazing. <laughs> Alright, see you tomorrow.